All right. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Blog Talk Radio, as well as Saint to the Most High Yah of Online Church. This is Pastor Dow of the Straight with Truth Radio Broadcast. I bless each and every last one of you in a sweet, precious, and strong, and victorious and mighty overcoming name of our King, our soon coming King, our victorious, overcoming, triumphant King. Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Hey, we got another very interesting show here tonight. Um, myself and Sister Cindy and even Brother Ed, her husband, has showed up here tonight uh, to try to do our best to invest some wisdom and knowledge uh, into you, uh, the people of the Most High God. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to briefly talk here for a moment. You can come on in, Sister Cindy. We're going to briefly uh, talk in here for a moment. Let me see where we at. There we go. And and um, we're going to answer your questions. I'm going to have them in different spots because I'm bringing in. He can come in and we'll just trade up. Um, about particular health issues because people have been emailing me questions. I'm sure they have been emailing you questions, right? They've been emailing you questions and stuff. And, you know, this is what the body of Christ is supposed to be all about. You know, why, well, before we get started, I want to talk to you all a little bit about, of course, you know, this, this little object right here. It's called silver. I had a question proposed to me today, and they said, you know, Pastor Dow, considering what happened in um, the Roosevelt era, um, when when they uh, allegedly so-called confiscated gold, um, and, and, you know, um, what are we going to do about silver when the government and all them come around and, and uh and they start talking about that, uh, you know, we're going to confiscate gold. We're going to, uh, you know, take take the gold and silver uh, from the people. Uh, what what in the world are we going to do? Uh, well, I told them flat out, first of all, number one, I can tell you you've been listening. You know, I have an uncanny ability to be able to pick up on people when they've been listening to someone, but they haven't really researched it for themselves and studied for themselves. Number one. The government did not confiscate the gold in the Roosevelt area in the 30s. They didn't do that. What they did was they turned around and they made it mandatory uh, for people to turn in their gold. And they gave you fiat currency or cash or the value of the particular gold gold piece, one ounce, whatever it was at that particular time, which just happened to be $25 an ounce. Now, of course, those who did not turn it in immediately saw an 80% increase in the value of their coins um, because they immediately jumped it up to 30 35 dollars an ounce and those I said those who did not turn in those that did not comply everybody just because the government puts out an edict mandate or whatever you want to call it just because they put it out does not mean that you have to comply uh, with them um, I mean after all how do they know you have it if you do have it? Now, of course you know when when things really start getting bad and stuff uh, my game plan is we're going to move all the silver away from the places where everybody seemed to think that we know or that we think that we have it stored because we're not going to have anybody to come down here and overrun us and just take the silver we'll put it somewhere else and then uh, let some other people know exactly where it is that's what we do but uh, you people got to understand uh, that, that precious metals tangible assets you know when you got this in your hand this thing never goes to zero it never has been to zero in the history of mankind, never has been. And you, you, you've got to understand, you got to change the way you think, change your mindset. Uh, the part of the question had to do with, well, what about my 401k? What about IRA and all this other stuff? Let me tell you something. If you've got anything invested in paper, you're going to lose it anyway. If they declare a bank holiday, how are you going to get your money out of the bank? How are you going to get out of the safety deposit box? Because they're going to literally just take it from you. What are you going to do? Um, I mean, look at the MF Global scandal. Here are people that were invested in paper, and, and they just literally eroded and just took away um, all the wealth of, of all these people. I mean, I mean can you imagine um, over, over um, uh, a million-something people, 600,000 people, clients that had invested money in this MF Global situation right here? And now all of a sudden, they don't know where their money went. They don't know where their assets went. They don't know where their paper went. They, they have not a clue. They don't even have an idea where it's at. None whatsoever at all. And John Corzine, and they still put the label in front of him, the Honorable John Corzine. That's amazing. If you want that tag in front of your Honorable, all you got to do is be a crook. 
here in this society. But they turn around and they put the Honorable John Corzine up there. This book is running scot free after he has literally raped, lynched, and robbed and stolen the wealth of many and put others in poverty. Now, from my last understanding, Gerald Salente has done recover 70% of his assets, but he's still, what a 30% loss is a lot of money. If you've got a $100,000, I'm just saying 100000 for a round figure because, you know, I can't really talk about math all that much. can't get it in all those little finer nuances. But if you've got $100,000 in the bank, and then you go back to the bank and they tell you, well, you know what, you still you got money in the bank, Mr. Dow, but you're thirty thousand dollars short because the you know we lost your money and we can't find it. it does that? What, do you know what kind of thoughts that will run through your head? I mean, you can make a plea, you can make a cry, but what are you gonna do about it? Unless you start taking action in your own head, which you know that's coming up here. So you know, rather than um, you know deal with all that, rather than deal with all that, what you need to do. What you need to do is you need to go ahead and uh, you need to take control of these assets yourself and don't depend upon nobody else to store these things for you. Now, all you people that are, that are sitting there on the online, you know, I just had Sister Smith come in and say that it's choppy and blog talk. You got all these people in this room. Somebody should have been able to communicate with her by now that we're all listening on online-church. And then I'll take the feedback down when we take the phone calls in. Um, I guess I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. That's where you people got to go um, if it's coming in choppy on, online because I've got the video feed up a little bit higher. All right. But anyway, the idea is to get into money, real money, because whether you like it or not, just by the historical reference historical value just a historic just the history in itself you cannot take debt create more debt to pay off debt and any money that's in circulation it's got to go to debt automatically and the dollar is going to fail it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when is it is going to do it um but you need to position yourself to be ready that's what you need to do. You just really, truly need to do that. Now, more than anything, before you even get silver, you should get a whole boatload of food, dry goods and food. You need to stock up on food, 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 clean water, 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 water. You need to get water purifiers and filters. You need to always uh, have yourself ready. You need to, because uh, you're going to be able to barter. And, you know, I, I, hey, I didn't put this out, but... Um, Brother Ed and Sister Cindy and Sister Carol and I were sitting in the house last night after Shabbat and we was talking. And uh, and, and I told him, I said, you know, yeah, yeah, Brother Mike, that's right. I said, you know what we need? I said, I don't, you know, at this point in time and game, we need to just stack up on and stock up on commodities. Don't worry about if it's um, a brown sugar, turban, non sugar. Just go to the store and buy a whole shelf of sugar. Have you seen the price of sugar just in the last year? And what's that happened with the price of just Regular old diamond sugar. Have you seen the price? What happened? I mean, man, we could have sold sugar. We could have invested in sugar and sold sugar and made, and made a, a, a considerable increase. Peanut butter and cocoa, too. Yeah. I went to the Amish store the other day and bought uh, a container of peanut butter. And it was $10.70, but it's because it was all organic. It's, it's, it's all, um, you know, it's got the oil and stuff up top and stuff. It was $10.70 for that container of peanut butter. We eat a lot of peanut butter here at Straightway. And I walked out of the store thinking that it was going to be the same thing. By the time I got home, looked at the price on the, the lid, $13. It jumped from $10.70 to $13. You need to get all the sugar you can, buy up all the coffee you can. Have you seen the price of coffee? Have you seen the price of coffee? I don't drink coffee. I ain't asked me to drink it. I just haven't seen the price of it. I don't drink gasoline. I've seen the price of it. <laughs> it the coffee, uh, sugar, these commodities right here, people go mad and crazy over. Get coffee, get sugar. Um, uh, you may even want to invest in cigarettes and just put them back to the side. You may even want to get a couple packs of those just to trade off with some people. Because people, they anything that this flesh is going to feed on, they can do it. You may even want to try to buy whiskey. Yep. You got a couple of things to do with whiskey. 
first of all, you can use it for cuts, wounds, um, anytime you get injured or something like that. And of course, and then if you get a toothache and you need somebody to 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 do a, a dental surgery on you, you know, I can do that here. I can we can pour that whole bottle down your mouth, like get some pliers, or I can just knock the five of you one way or the other. We can get it out. <laughs> The old-fashioned way. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're going to have to start changing your mind because your environment is changing right before you. Uh, for instance, here, um, you know, we, I, I've got um, vodka here, bottled, bottled vodka. Now, I'm going to tell you this. We got bottled vodka for a few reasons, and I'll leave it at that. All right? So well, plenty of, and I always go out, you can buy vodka pretty cheap. You don't have to go get the expensive stuff. Just get, just get the cheap vodka. But you got to start thinking, how you how are you going to survive in this environment? Because when we get in this environment, I promise you, you're not going to worry. You're not going to be worried about if you're eating organic peanut butter or organic corn. You're just going to want some food in your belly. That's just all there is to it. So when you're looking at um, sugar. When you're looking at coffee, um, vodka, whiskey, um, and, and stuff like that, not that you're going to, now, and you need to stay out of the sugar because you already consume too much sugar as is. As Americans, you are by default, you consume too much sugar. Um, you need to start thinking like this. You need to start thinking like this and, and getting these things stored up. You should be going to the store and buying um I mean, just buying all kinds um, of paper goods, paper products. Just get ready, okay? Just get ready. Now, a lot of people say, well, toilet paper. Well, you can use toilet paper. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way. When the, in the fall, leaves fall off all tree all the time. Go out there and get some leaves and wipe your rear end. Um, or you can get some rags. Get a whole bunch of rags. And you go out there and clean them off or something like that. I mean, what did all old people do? They didn't run around with, with uh, toilet paper, did they? Seriously, robot. Seal and robot catalog. There's all kinds of ways, but yeah, I mean, paper goods is it, off the chain. It really is. All everything is. It really truly is. But anyway, we're gonna get into um, uh, talking a little bit about your health. We're gonna be taking your phone calls here. Um, we have Sister Cindy back again by popular demand because some of you wanted to actually hear from Sister Cindy, um, and I realized that a lot of you. Uh, not logged into the chat room because sometimes there's a lot of foolishness that goes on in the chat room that you rather watch by online that's church than to deal with all the uh, foolishness that go on um, in, in the chat room. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk about a few things here. Sister Cindy got something she wants to mention to y'all. Um, and let me know how the sound coming in before I bring Sister Cindy up, okay? Because I may have to increase the volume. Um, Let me know how the sounds come in. I may have to increase the volume a little bit. I just don't know just yet. If you hear me just fine. Um, okay, good. I turned the mic up a little bit. Don't want to get overdriven or a little bit too hot and stuff. We're going to go ahead and talk about a few things here for a second. Let me see where you at, Sandy. Okay, I'm going to bring you in a little more, okay? You just moved. Yeah. Okay. Let's see you just moved. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. This is Sister Cindy. Sister Cindy is going to go ahead. Uh, good. Slight distortion. All right. Let me turn the. That's me. It won't be the same way with Sister Cindy, though. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Sister Cindy. Okay. I, will, I just jotted down a few things that I wanted to tell you all about. Um, we make a tincture here that helps fight um, viruses and little bugs that we get, uh, little germs. And it actually has uh, four ingredients, and it we use um, equal amounts, uh, grape seed, echinacea, mugwort, and cyanical. And we uh, use equal amounts of the four, put a pound of each, and uh, we put that in vodka and let it sit and extract for... I did mine about two months, maybe three, so it's very strong. And if, if anyone starts getting at least a little bit of uh, a sore throat, raspy throat, uh, any any fever, anything going on, that it really knocks it out. You know, there's a lot of viral infection. There's a lot of things floating around in the air nowadays, and you need stuff like this. The reason for the vodka is because we use vodka to extract all the properties 
uh, out of the, the herbs in itself is one of the best best ways to do it. And and the reason why we let it set up for so long is because we want to make sure we get it out. Now, in order to, for you to make a tincture, the way you make it is, is you get like a, a, a big glass jar and you cram all of the herbs you can get into it. At least go three quarters of the way, halfway, and pour all the vodka you can into it. And then move it around, move it around, or we can put the vodka in and then put the herbs in. Either way, but make sure you saturate that jar with more herbs. Don't do like the companies do where they, they'll put all this, they'll put a little bit of bark in there about that much and the rest of it with water and they'll throw a few leaves of herbs and they'll let it soak out and they call that a tincture and you go pay 15, 20, 30 dollars for it. The stuff that, the way I'm telling you to do it, it's a whole lot more powerful, at least a hundred times more powerful than what you would buy in the stores. And that's the reason why our particular herbal tinctures are affected. And before we go any further, anything that we do is not here to prevent cure or diagnose you from any type of mental illnesses or disease beside the mental illnesses we can't do nothing to cure you for that anyway only the most high can help you but we're not here to prevent any type of sickness and disease we don't claim to be doctors never have claimed to be doctors and never will be doctors do you understand that so what we're telling you the information that you're going to hear on this broadcast here tonight is information that we personally use ourselves things we do here ourselves. So the answer you'll receive is what we would do ourselves. So if you call on the phone and ask us, you know, should I do this or should I do that? You may hear our speech continually say, well, what I would do. Because we got a bunch of jack governors, I mean government out there that just love to make a pretty penny off of us and put us in their government prison camps to, to have us to work in, uh, in these intensive labor camps for four cents a day so they can be able to make a profit off our labors. You know, right? But you cram all them herbs, everything you can down in there, pour bark in there. After a little time, maybe a week or two, it'll settle. Pour, pour, put more, more herbs in there and cram it down more, cram it down more. And that's how you get all the properties out of it. And that's how you make a powerful tincture. Go ahead, Cindy. Okay, I think someone asked that I repeat the herbs. Okay. So I'm going to repeat them again. Grape seed, echinacea, mugwort, and cyanical. And I think it was cyanical that we had trouble finding. I think yeah. Sister Carol had to get that from Canada. India. Was it India? Where'd you get the? Did you get it from India, Carol? Yes, I believe so. Yep. Cyanical. Yes. Um. Not cyanical. S a n i c l e. Mugwort. Cyanical. That's the one right there. Mugwort. M u g. Oh, just like it says. Mugwort. Now, y'all already know about inclination and all that other stuff, but that's cyanical. We actually had to get that imported. We had to get it imported from India, and it took a little while to get it here, but, you know, order it now, and, and then when it does come, at least you'll have it better than not having it at all, because there's coming a time we may not even get any of this stuff, but we need to have these herbal tinctures right now, because you are responsible, openly responsible for your health, not us, not anybody out there. You are responsible for it. So the information that you learned here tonight, you need to apply because it's not going to work unless you apply it. I would like to say that it works very well with those in air household. Um, the least little thing, we, we take it and then it knocks it completely out. We had a neighbor that his uh, children uh, had, um, let's see, strep throat. Mm -hmm. And his wife had strep throat and he had a fever. And he came and wanted some of this and gave him some and by the next morning all symptoms gone he right. didn't get it everyone else in the house had it so that's something that we personally use you can use it or not use it but that's the information is there um another thing that we use and i would never ever say anyone else needs to but we use this and it's called black salve yeah black salve i will show it to you now, as far as in the parts um, in, in those ingredients, you're not going to be able to use the cyanica in equal parts. Number one, none of us have that kind of bank. Um, but what is, what it was it? Wasn't it the little bitty bead stuff? I bought a pound of each. Yeah. Oh, you can't get it in a pound. Mm -hmm. yes. Then you use it in equal parts. Then <clears throat> I'm thinking about another herb that we got out of. We get so much from out of country, but this is black salve right here. We're going to put it up in the camera. Go ahead, Sister Cena. Okay, and with this black salve. That actually is what I personally use, or those in my family, that if, if you've got a mole or spot uh, on your skin that you think is a little um, 
looks a little odd. You know, they, they, the dermatologist talks about how moles change colors. If you put this on a, on a mole and then cover it with Band-Aid, leave it for 24 hours, then do that again. This is the strongest that I've seen. It will actually pull that out. If there's anything wrong with it, if there's nothing wrong with it, it won't do anything. Um, this is very, very powerful. It is the the best I have found, and it is it comes from lcrblacksalve.com. They would tell you there how to use it. You would also need to, to purchase some un petroleum jelly because petroleum jelly has petroleum in it. That, that's how it gets its name. Anybody at Walmart on petroleum jelly? We get it at Vitacost. Did y'all hear that? Y'all hear that, Saints? Y'all hear that, ladies and gentlemen? At Vitacost. On petroleum jelly. On petroleum jelly. They have it at this website, but it's higher. And the Vitacost had it, had it much, much cheaper. You're going to pay much more money anyway for, for the good stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. When I first started purchasing this years ago, one container was $25. Oh. It's about $50 now. You see how inflation is even in, even infecting the market on this stuff right here? She said $25 some years ago. Now it's 50 bucks, And we keep a couple of these on hand. Uh, we, have, uh, we had a person that had a spot on their back, and they put some of this on the back, and they felt a pulling and a drawing. And from the the lower butt cheek came um, a growth about like that out, and then it just heals back over. Came came out of the back. It mm -hmm. actually it, it pulled like a cord, if you want to call it, from mm -hmm. from from the butt mm -hmm. up to the top of the back where it came out from. Then we this is old Indian stuff, I believe. Yes, yes. This is an old mm -hmm. Indian herb, just like essiac. Mm -hmm. it, you know, all these are, are stuff that you many of you may have never heard of. It, it's in the grave because a lot of people have passed on and gone on and, and, and we've had to actually um, restore, search, I mean dig deep to find out all this stuff. It took a few years. What we're telling you here tonight, what Sister Cindy and Brother Ed is going to be telling you now, it took us years to learn and you're able to get it just like this. Yeah, and and also when these spots come out, they may some of them don't have a cord, but some of them may have a long cord or, or medium-sized cord. So it's, it's very interesting to see what comes out, but that's better than going to a doctor. Right. Um, and I wanted to talk to, to you all briefly about if you have a runny nose, if you start throwing up, vomiting, or if you have diarrhea. All of those are the body's way of ridding the body of whatever's going on. So you don't want to stop it. You don't want to stop it. If you've got a runny nose, that's the body trying to get rid of something. If you're vomiting, if you get food poisoning, the first thing you do is throw up. Your body is getting rid of that. And same with diarrhea. The body is wonderfully made, and that's its way of getting rid of these uh, toxins or whatever has gotten in there. Now, you wouldn't need diarrhea for a year. I'm right, not talking right. about that. But just, you know, for just a few days, don't stop it because you're you're, you're put, leaving that uh, the, the poison, the toxin in the body. And what she's saying is so important because this, even this is a change of mind. Usually we have been trained and we have been conditioned at home because our family has been trained by the same institutions we have, the medical profession. If something is going on in our bodies, the first thing we want to do is stop it. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have a fever. First thing we want to do is we want to stop it. But don't stop the fever. Yeah, exactly. Let it run its course. Now, if it gets to an alarming levels like 104 or something like it, 103, 104, then you want to start taking precautionary measures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that right? But you know, you got you have to allow your body to do what it was designed to do. Am I making any sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you you can even uh, cut up some ginger, uh, shred some ginger, and take a ginger bath, just mm -hmm. the root, and that will bring a fever down. Did y'all hear that? Uh, but don't don't run to the doctor or run to the over counter to take something. Let let this stuff run its course. Well, see, you got to, again, you have to break the conditioning process. You know, we've been trained, let's go, if we don't go to the pharmacy, let's just go to the pharmacy area in the drugstore and try to find something mm -hmm. to actually cover up and mask all these symptoms. You're not doing anything about whatever's taking place in your body. All you're doing is trying to seek for comfort rather than just going through and letting the body run its course. And then I wanted to talk to you about yeast. A lot of people have uh, overgrowth of yeast in the body. 
And with yeast, one of the symptoms is bloating after you eat, but that can also be a symptom for other things, but that is for, for yeast. And if the back of your heel is rough to the point where you, if you move it across, say, a cotton sheet, and it almost would pick the mm -hmm. sheet, that's yeast. Uh, and a lot of people have yeast. Also, if there's a coating on the tongue, mm -hmm. uh, that can be yeast. So You mean uh, a, a white coating, yes, like if you stick your tongue out, ah! <laughs> and it's white uh, rubbing. That can be that can be yeast. And to get rid of that, uh, a good thing is the oregano oil. I think we talked about may have mentioned oregano oil last time, but I wanted to mention about the bloating and the mm -hmm. especially the heels. That that's a, a very um um good indication that there's yeast in the body. When you get the yeast gone with the oregano oil and wellness resources has that. Mm -hmm. It's wellnessresources.com, um, uh, then the heel will smooth out. It'd be just like a baby's uh, baby's heel. That, and uh, if you have the toenails or fingernails that are have the the fungus that's a yeast, mm -hmm. the oregano oil. You can even put that under the nail, on the nail, soak the nail, and that that will work. Yeah, don't go to Walmart and or, or, mm -hmm. or CVS or Rep Call, whatever they call these places, and go buy this stuff you paint on your foot. You ain't no more wasting your time. Right. And besides all that, you know, again, every. Single time something goes on, we think we can just put something on it and that'll take care of everything. That does work on certain things, but the majority of sickness and diseases are internal. So you need to take something internal it, so your body can work the way that it should. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that's that's pretty much all I had written down. I don't know if you do you want Ed to talk and then take questions. We're going to clarify something here for a minute from um, Shabbat, uh, Shabbat's bra, um, yesterday service. When I called Sister Cindy up, and um, and she mentioned about you know eating a green food diet, to where she had uh, lost an extraordinary amount of weight, and she didn't experience any skin sagging, no. you know, stuff like that, because she had the right amount of protein, um, the, the right amount of nutrients that was going in, it. and you know she had ate a lot of organic spinach, a whole bunch of it in the salad. Matter of fact, the the salad was very, very, very green, very, very green. Uh, a salad is not iceberg lettuce. Uh, as a matter of fact, you need to throw away iceberg lettuce. Give it to the chickens or throw it outside or something like that because it's not going to do you a bit of good because there's really no nutritional value whatsoever at all in iceberg lettuce. And the only reason why we like eating iceberg lettuce is because it's crunchy. That's about it. Um, but, you know, we what's some of the, the green leafy vegetables? I had kale, mm -hmm. spinach. Romaine lettuce. Um, I tried mustard greens, but it's raw, and that mm -hmm. was a little bit too um, bitter, too, too strong for me. Um, collard greens. We did collard greens, and I did cabbage, raw cabbage, and I uh, I also put some uh, some crap. I could use some mm -hmm. crap in there, and onions. No tomato. I did not use tomatoes. I did not use uh, carrots because of the uh, the sugar in them. It had nothing to do with the, the acidic level no, in the no. tomatoes or nothing like that. Um, I could have used just a little bit of tomatoes, but I just thought don't use any because that mm. would put a limit you on, on the amount of tomatoes you use. But just the darker, uh, the better. The darker the leaf, the better. Right. Uh, uh, iceberg lettuce was, you couldn't even use it. That was not a choice. Yeah, it's, it's really a waste. Mm -hmm. It has no value. Uh, and um, I had. I pretty much ate salads a lot, but because of the arsenic poisoning that I had, mm -hmm. I couldn't lose any weight. That arsenic was causing my body to hold fluids. Mm -hmm. And then when I um, found out what I had and took an herb, not, a, not anything from the doctor, an herb to get rid of that, then with eating the salad, that really helped to, uh, to boost the weight, weight loss back. Did y'all, you, uh, you know, the superfood that we make, mm -hmm. superfood y'all make, did y'all also include that? Did you include that too, or you just stuck with the salad? And the there salad? was, uh, no, it, it, with that, we took this, we took superfood. Today. So, what, what she's getting in is an extraordinary amount, because I'm sure you ate a large salad, right? Yes. Yeah, because you, you can pretty much eat as much as you want, mm -hmm. right? No salad dressing, just uh, about yeah, a, a, a spoonful of olive oil. Spoonful of olive oil. Mm -hmm. And that's, olive oil. that's it. Maybe some spices. Maybe some spices, yeah. something, anything like it. So, mm -hmm. so if y'all are understanding this, um, ladies and gentlemen, and brothers and sisters, 
Um, the idea is, notice, we're getting back again to green leafy vegetables. We're getting back to the things that would make your body function right. We're getting back to the things that, uh, you know, the normal American would just go, eh. Getting back to old school. Yeah. Future. Getting back to uh, what the scriptures tell us, the herb of the field for the service of man. And some of you need service. And some of you ain't never pulled into the finish station, as they used to call it, and got any service whatsoever at all. No telling what to eat. You know what we should do? We should get some some of that um, uh, STP stuff or whatever that stuff is, that Textron stuff you put in the cars, yeah. pour it down in your mouth and stuff. Maybe that'll <laughs> clean them out real good. You know what I mean? Got to be funnier once in a while. I got to break it up. You know what I mean? And I was asked where the arsenic came from. I, I really don't know. Um, it it was there for about 10 years and, because that's why the weight the weight gain kept coming. And the water, raw and retention. Especially around the middle because my body was holding fluid around the organs to protect them, which is what it should be doing. Mm -hmm. And I would even mention to my husband, when I would try to run, I can't run. It feels like all the water in my belly is shaking and I didn't even drink any water. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, it was the protection. So now that made sense of why, you know, it, even the running was, was uh, you know, felt Felt odd. So you were eating salad three times mm -hmm. a day. Yes. And and, and huge amounts of yes. salad three times yes. a day. Mm -hmm. So how much your water intake is that? Is that unlimited too? That's yes. unlimited, unlimited too, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I bring this up is because see again here we are changing the mindset. We're changing the mindset again. Are we telling you to go around and be vegetarians? No, it's not. We're just telling you what she did for a cleanse and what she did in order to lose an extraordinary amount of weight without. Um, um, starving herself. Now, I'm sure you're probably going to be hungry a little bit. Were you? I was not. Because you ate a large amount? Yes. Mm -hmm. A large amount. Um, but the idea is, is that you can't be afraid to do this stuff. You know, you know, I mean, and then now this was what, 18 weeks you said? No, it was 21 days. 21 days mm -hmm. that you did this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the 21 days, um, when did you start back going back like fish or chicken? Uh, you could do that on day 11. I think, was it about day 18 that we did it? Like we, that. we waited even longer because we could tell we were really detoxing. Gotcha. And you could add either fish or chicken, but still no uh, no red meat. Mm, okay. It, it could not be deep fried, no, like no KFC chicken, you know, nothing like that. It had to be baked or you know, something of that nature. Right. And notice she said something very, very keen here too. No red meat. Um, talk about the digestion process of how long it takes for red meat to digest as opposed to chicken and fish. It can set in the colon 72 yes. hours. That's before it even begins to really <laughs> yes. truly break down and digest. Yeah, so 72 is, hours. Yeah. Uh, and, and the, uh, of course, you know, you need to be careful about the mercury and the fish, but there, there's stuff in everything. You just right. do the best you can. Uh, but there's no no cheese, mm -hmm. uh, no, dairy. No, no, no dairy, dairy product, no. no eggs during this, and it's it will help if people have addictions to coffee or to sodas. It will help with that. I didn't have an addiction to anything, right? Uh, so I, I don't do the sodas and don't do coffee, so none of that bothered me. But after 21 days, you will be that that addiction to those foods, they say should be gone. gone. Could be gone because your mm -hmm. body's no longer craving them. A lot of addictions because your body's communicating mm -hmm. um, to you. And many of you are, many of your apostate out there needs to be reset anyway. As a matter of fact, I want everybody that listens to me to not drink. As you people out there, everybody that listens to me that's not here straightway, you're forbidden to drink any soda for 30 days. Oh, mercy. There will be. And if you decide to drink soda, I'm going to pray before I go to bed tonight. And when I pray, I'm going to put the Holy Spirit on you. <laughs> there are, uh, in, in this endeavor, I found that, that sometimes people can be like myself and just can't lose weight, even though they were eating healthy. And I was before. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you have weight all over, that's more of a thyroid issue. If you have weight around the middle, but the arms and the legs stay, you know, relatively small, that's an adrenal issue. Or if it was like mine, it was just right in the middle mm -hmm. in the, and it looked like a beer belly, but I didn't drink beer. Mm -hmm. That's a liver issue. And then the arsenic had the liver block. Now go over that again. Mm -hmm. Again, y'all make sure y'all listen to this. She's going to hit it again. Okay. Do it again. If you have, if you have trouble losing weight, you, you eat eating healthy and you are not losing weight. If you have weight all, weight gain all over, it is 
probably a thyroid issue. If you have weight gain around the middle, but the arms and the legs stay small, mm -hmm. it is an adrenal issue. And then you would not be sleeping well at night. And then if it's like a, a, a little pot belly, a beer belly, mm -hmm. but you don't drink beer, that's a liver issue. So there's something going on with the liver. So you need to get that, you know, that cleansed out, mm -hmm. find out what's going on there, and then the weight will start coming <clears> off. Now, most of you have probably been under the knife out there, and you've probably had certain body parts taken out of you because when these Dr. Jekylls and Mr. Hyde get finished operating on you and treating you like Frankenstein, um, they, they, they've they taken things out of you that you, otherwise your body would use to function properly. Um, for instance, some of you women have had hysterectomies. Uh, some of you have had uh, gallbladders taken out. You take gallbladders out, um, you're, you're not, your body's not allowed to create the bowel in order to digest mm -hmm. the food properly. You, you'll be acidic. From exactly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and so you're going to retain a little bit. I know women that has hysterectomies, they retain a little more weight uh, than normal. Uh, but you're just going to have to discipline yourself. You're going to have to really true discipline. And remember what I said. Anybody who is a faithful follower of this ministry, no soda for 30 days. 30 days. And then when you do drink a soda, you get one. For the next 30 days. Hallelujah. And and I would I would have been tempted to in that in that 10, 11 years to, to have gone to a doctor. But mm -hmm. I knew they couldn't help me. You knew it. Yeah. I mean you're you're tempted like, boy, just what if, what if? Mm -hmm. But they put you on medication and that that, that would have never fixed my arsenic issue. Gotcha. Makes sense, don't so it? So I, I had to just wait and go the holistic route. Better to treat the symptom and not the problem. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, look at him looking.